Stan Gibalisco here, proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1GV, Whiskey One Good Vibrations. I have another application of a pentode vacuum tube that I'd like to show you, <clears throat> just as an example of how such a tube can be used to produce a frequency multiplier with significant gain. Your input signal must be substantial enough to overcome a negative grid bias such that the control grid is biased at exactly the cutoff point. That means that signal can flow for only half the cycle. That's the half of the cycle of the RF input cycle that has a positive voltage so that current can flow through the tube because the voltage is the negative grid the negative grid voltage is less than the cutoff voltage but during the negative part of the cycle the negative grid voltage exceeds the bias voltage and the tube remains cut off so in effect it rectifies the signal but it also produces gain because it is a vacuum tube amplifier the screen grid is biased typically as you would with a pentode tube. You'd have to look up the specifications of the particular tube to know exactly what this voltage would be. It would probably be something on the order of one-third of the positive plate voltage. In this case that would be 200 volts. This resistor would therefore have, I believe, half of the, no, twice the value of this resistor, right? So the, no, half the value of this resistor. So uh, the voltage would be more near to ground potential than to 600 volts plus 200 volts. You tune the output resonant circuit to a whole number multiple of the input frequency, that is twice, three times, four times, five times, etc. Uh, of course, there's a practical limit to how large that number can get, but it, it should always be an integral, that is, integer or whole number multiple of the input frequency, not some oddball multiple like five and a half times or or two and one third times, but an ev but an actual whole number multiple. So, if you wanted to make a tripler, for example, and the input signal was at 3.5 megahertz your output signal would be 3 times 3.5 or uh, 10.5, wouldn't that be? Megahertz. Uh, or, if you wanted to make a doubler, uh, it would be 7 megahertz, etc., etc. The suppressor grid of the vacuum tube is normally at ground potential that's 0 volts DC. It's directly connected to ground in most situations. These two resistors again provide the screen grid bias. This resistor elevates the cathode somewhat above ground, making it easier to get the appropriate grid bias for half wave signal rectification in effect. So this is a rectifier and amplifier. The rectifier creates nonlinearity, and that nonlinearity produces harmonics. And you can choose which one of those harmonics, the second, third, fourth, fifth, etc., uh, which you want to have your output frequency occur at. So just another example, generic example, these blocking capacitors keep DC from the external circuitry out of the uh, circuit of, for the pentode tube, and they also prevent short circuits that might otherwise occur. For example, uh, you certainly don't want to short circuit the plate to some ground potential voltage, thereby uh, reducing the tube gain to zero and making your... Well, you know how it goes. Uh, even just a coil, a DC coil transformer, and it, it would uh, do that. So that's you always want to make sure to have these blocking capacitors at the input and the output. Their value will depend on the frequency, typically in the ham radio bands, anywhere from 0.01 to 0.001 microfarads. 
Stan Gibalisco, W1TV, saying 73 and so long, which, whether a multiple of a frequency or not, in my native fist always translates to da 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 da.